Hi, I'm Daz, G7SDC. Today's video is about a top band transmitter that I built in 2006. Uh, top, band, top band, of course, 160 metres. Um, this video came about because I spoke to some of the younger members at uh, my local radio club and I said, uh, well, you've seen my YouTube channel, what would you like me to um, talk about next? And they said, well, we like teardown, so I thought, well, perhaps we'll have a look inside this uh, top band transmitter that I built in 2006 and perhaps um, you'll find it interesting. So this is what it's going to be about today, this uh, transmitter that I built. Back at the time, um, the uh, regulations were changed so that um, B licenses were granted um, privileges on the HF band and I thought well where do I start? I didn't really want to buy an expensive black box so I thought well I'll have a chat with my uh, senior amateur friends in the club and ask them what, what they suggest and they said well most of them started out on top band and most of them had a shortwave receiver and uh, they just decided to build a transmitter to go with it. So I thought I'd have an attempt at doing this myself. Um, in front of you now is the uh, block diagram um, of this transmitter. And basically we start with the microphone and then we have an, auto, uh, an audio amplifier to amplify the signal from the microphone and also an automatic gain control which is very helpful um, when you, you have an SSB transmission because if you can keep the average audio level high then also your output power will be high as well. The output from the audio amplifier is uh, fed into a balance mixer, that's an NE602 and that produces a double sideband signal so that the carrier is suppressed. This is then fed into a homebrew Extel filter which works with 4.43 crystals which were very popular then because um, it was the uh, carrier frequency for the colour on PAL television. The 4.43 single sideband signal is then fed into a mixer um, and uh, the uh, VFO runs at 6.2 to 6.4 megs so that then mixes it back down to top band. Um, it has to be on the high side in order to get lower sideband for the top band. The VFO is tuned electrically by Vericaps and it is, is then stabilised by a circuit, a huff puff circuit, which basically pushes the VFO back on frequency if it goes off frequency and also it provides a display of the frequency you're on. The signal from the mixer then goes through a bandpass filter because you need to filter out and make sure you've only got the um, different signal. Um, we don't want the uh, sum signal uh, in this case. And then further down it goes to a amplifier which you'll say um, op amp I use which was for video signal that seemed just the thing to use. A PA amplifier and then a relay to switch between the receiver and the aerial. I've connected the microphone amplifier and AGC to the oscilloscope so you can see the action of the automatic gain control as I raise the input. As I raise the input you can see that the output which is the top trace is stabilized. This helps keep the transmitter from splattering or overloading. Here we can see the output of the balance mixer which I've deliberately unbalanced slightly. This is the carrier frequency which you would normally have if it was AM. Here are two peaks on the upper side band. They're created by a 1.6 and a 1.8 kilohertz tone. And here is the lower side band. Again you can see the two peaks represented by the 1.6 and 1.8 kilohertz tones. Here we can see the output after the filter and as you can see only now only an upper side band remains. And you can see the two peaks represented by the 1.6 and 1.8 kilohertz tone that I'm feeding in currently. I'm connected here to the output of the mixer and you can see the wanted signal on the left and you can see lots of unwanted signals to the right. 
this is the signal after it's gone through the bandpass filter and as you can see it's a lot lot cleaner than it was with just the harmonics remaining this is the output of the aerial as you can see we've got a little bit of second harmonic but that's further filtered by using a resonant aerial and generally that's acceptable for the power level of this radio this part of the radio we're now looking inside is the mic amplifier and AGC that we looked at so we've got the microphone signal if I can get here microphone signal coming in this end through the um, dual op amp there's the FET for the automatic gain control various decoupling and here's the transistor that produces the split output you can see it here on the green and the white cable here Here we can see the balance mixer and also the crystal filter on this circuit board. Um, here's the NE602 and its associated crystal. And this pile of crystals and uh, various capacitors here forms the single sideband filter. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to take this filter into work and use a network analyzer and adjust the capacitors to try and get the bandwidth right. It was my first attempt, it just just seemed very narrow. I, I think a lot of it was um, impedance matching problems, but that's this this is the um, balanced mixer part anyway. Here we can see the mixer part of the radio. Here's the NE602 down here. This is the variable frequency oscillator, um, its main coil. You can see various capacitors I've uh, put on here to try and get the frequency range correctly. Here you can see the Vericap diodes and you can see the cable going off. These are the potentiometers for tuning here. Here's the output transformer which contains the which transforms the uh, mixed signal which is now on top band. And these two uh, transformers you can see here are the tuned circuits that provide the filtering. After the bandpass filtering, we can see the output op amp here, which uh, will drive the PA. And there's some voltage regulators here that are just soldered onto the board. Here you can see the PA bias adjuster. And also you can see the Zener diode there that provides the bias voltage. This shot shows the PA amplifier, final PA. There's the biasing we just looked at. Here's an output transformer, and here's the low pass filter. And there's a considerable size heat sink for the IRF 510 uh, transistor. Um, and this relay is used to uh, switch the bias on and off so that the um, bias doesn't remain on during receive. This is the uh, frequency stabilization circuit that also provides the frequency display. I got the design um, off the internet so um, this is a, a, a copy design. Basically there's an op amp, a couple of uh, uh, 74 series ICs and a PIC microprocessor and there you can see the crystal and that's connected by this ribbon cable to the display here. Um, it takes a sample of the VFO you can see on this screen cable here and you can see a, a preamplifier here just to uh, step that up and then a signal here you can see on this pink wire a very small change of voltage is used to retune the VFO as it uh, drifts off frequency as it were it's a little while since I've um, it's a little while since I've turned this radio on so hopefully it'll work um, Oh, that's interesting. I've obviously been at the PIC code. <laughs> okay, so there's the frequency display. And here's your tuning. What I used to do was, uh, when we used to have local nets, I would uh, tune into the local net and uh, set the frequency on the receiver. And then I would pull the aerial out. And there was just enough leakage um, from this uh, VFO that I could just adjust this for zero beat on the incoming signal and then once I got the frequency correct I'd push this lock button here if I can get it to work there we go and then it would stabilize the VFO as as the VFO drifted it would pull it back into frequency 
and uh, yep it transmits still so that's good there we go when it transmits it switches the aerial for the receiver um, from the receiver to the transmitter um, and it also provides an output um, to the receiver that mutes it because most receivers had a mute input around the uh, 1970s and 80s um, so that you could plug your own transmitter in the back and mute it um, when you go into transmitter uh, go into transmit mode and just to finish the uh, video off I thought to play a bit of audio that I managed to find in the archive of me actually on the air with this radio across town like you used to do in the old days except you'd be using a couple of valves probably and a modulation transformer thanks <laughs> um, guys but yeah um, well we'll try this other microphone and see what it sounds like it's a Philips microphone and you said you like the sound of it I like the sound of it as well when I attach it to the 80 metre rig um, well we were comparing it with, with a telephone earpiece and I think that a telephone earpiece is a fair, <laughs> fairly uh, rotten comparison if you want my opinion so um, we'll have to see what the Philips sounds like when we get that wired up and plugged in.